and it will be available uh, in our uh, internet. Uh, so uh, now uh, let me present uh, Sake. Um, it, it's, it's nice for me to see that he is able to do this presentation today. Uh, it was a uh, long time ago that uh, we started uh, collaborating together. Uh, at the beginning, it was a bit uh, surprise and funny for me receiving an email from, from him who wanted to, to collaborate with me and, and to use some of the software that I have uh, developed before. And uh, he offered me to collaborate in one journal paper and afterward we were collaborating. Uh, the question is that uh, in, later in 2019, uh, there was an open call for postdoc in, in situ and I contacted him and told him that it was a, a nice opportunity that he could apply for it. He applied, but uh, when he was supposed to come at the beginning of 2020, uh, we have the problem that uh, COVID arise and then everything was delayed and we have a lot of problems to, to, to make him uh, even uh, able to sign the contract. And actually it was more than one year, almost one year and a half later that we were able to sign the contract and, and Saker start to work remotely from, from Egypt where he's uh, already now. And hopefully uh, after summer, we expect that he is able to, to travel here and to, to be with us in city. So uh, now we think that this timing uh, is the right moment that he introduce uh, his work and present you what he's uh, doing, his research interest. Uh, don't hesitate to contact him by email or using Teams. Uh, he's uh, connected. We are uh, working regularly uh, through Teams. And as soon as he comes here, for sure, you will have the opportunity to have an uh, in-person face-to-face meeting with him. Uh, he was studying in Egypt in, in, in two universities, the master, the doctoral degree. Uh, after his uh, engineering degree, he was working as software engineering. And later he was uh, working as lecturer uh, at the beginning in, in one university in Egypt, later also in uh, the University of Saudi uh, Arabia. And later he was supposed to the doctoral researcher in the Ina University in South Korea, where uh, he was mainly working in uh, medical informatics. His background is uh, related to uh, information system, information security, but uh, as I told you, uh, his uh, specialization is more and more in medical informatics and in particular in um, uh, ontologies, also some rule-based system, now more uh, deep learning architecture, focus on uh, data uh, analysis for uh, problems related to Alzheimer's disease. And more recently, um, he has published uh, several papers on the topic of Alzheimer's disease, as he is going to present uh, you now, with a focus on clinical decision support, with the idea that uh, we can provide uh, physicians, clinicians, with information extracted from, from medical data that could be useful for them when doing diagnosis and, and trying to, to make any kind of prescription. So, uh, Saker, uh, it is your time. Uh, you can uh, start uh, introducing yourself a bit more if you consider and present your work. That is, I think, is the most important thing for, for people uh, working in cities with that. So, uh, go ahead. Thank you so much, uh, my friend, Professor Jos, for this comprehensive introduction. Uh, and thank you so much, uh, the whole lab, for this opportunity. Um, I feel too much proud to be with you. And this is a very good opportunity to me to share my work and to work with you. Uh, so uh, uh, my name is Sheikh Sabah. I am from Egypt. Um, uh, so, so I am gra I graduated from uh, Egypt as. So just said, and I took my master and PhD there from uh, Cairo University and Mansoura University. I worked as a, a, a lecturer and uh, assistant lecturer in uh, in Egypt since 2003. And after that, I went to King Saud University and I worked uh, there at mathematical department for around um, seven years. Uh, after that. Uh, Actually, I took my PhD in uh, in the beginning of uh, 2016. So I went to Egypt uh, after staying in Saudi Arabia for some time. 
And after that, I went to so, to King to uh, Inha University in uh, South Korea for post doctor for uh, two years. The first year I worked as a post doctor, and the, the second year I I promoted as a research professor. So from there, I worked in the uh, uh, department of information and communication engineering. My research interest uh, uh, is uh explainable artificial intelligence uh, deep learning and uh, especially uh, enhancing it by using semantics and uh, fuzzy uh, knowledge uh, clinical support system this is the main uh, topic i am working on uh, electronic health record mobile health uh, semantic knowledge engineering and also ontology and fuzzy ontology so uh uh, it is uh, uh, important to, to say that my presentation will not be uh, uh, not be technical. I, I will just share my ideas and uh, uh, what we we did. And if for any uh, other uh, specialized questions, we you can ask me at any time while uh, presenting. And after and also after finishing the presentation, we can uh, communicate at any time by any way. You are welcome at any time. So uh, my presentation now will, will, will speak about clinical chain support systems. Uh, so uh, these systems, CDSS, are any system uh, uh, plugged in the hospital to giving any kind of support for, uh, for physicians and for uh, clinicians there. Even uh, a reminder, this is also considered as, uh, as a clinical decision support, so any kind of support. Uh, decision support system has two main types uh, knowledge based uh, systems and data driven systems uh, and we uh, fortunately we work it in both sides we work it firstly on the knowledge ba uh, knowledge based systems wh where we uh, engineered our knowledge based for for the uh, decision support system as you know that uh, these systems has uh, knowledge based uh, inference engine and user interface so uh, we used engines like uh, fuzzy uh, systems and ontology, but the main challenge there was to uh, to create the knowledge base, and this is the main challenge. We uh, uh, using knowledge based systems, we didn't use data at all. We just uh, collect the knowledge from domain experts, from clinical practice guidelines, and like that. And we uh, uh, make encoding for this knowledge in the form of fuzz rules or uh, or ontology uh, axioms, and we build the decision support system. After that, we enhance our work by using the data-driven uh, uh, systems. We use the machine learning and deep learning techniques to uh, enhance this work. Uh, and also, we will discuss some uh, points regarding our future directions like electronic health record embedded CDSS and distributed decision support systems, explainable decision support systems for chronic diseases, and trustworthy uh, decision support system also for chronic diseases. So, uh, yes, we speak about that. So, our first paper uh, was uh, named uh, uh, diabetes mellitus treatment ontology, DMTO, a realistic ontology for uh, a standard diabetes mellitus treatment. This paper published in Journal of Biomedical Semantics, which is a pioneer journal in this main uh, topic, which is ontology. Uh, we also uh, pro uh, proposed this, uh, this uh, ontology. It, is, it, it was cited too many times uh, by using uh, the literature. Uh, this paper is there in bio portal. You can download it and use it freely. Uh, in this paper, we uh, we collected too many knowledge regarding the uh, diabetes uh, treatment, and we built a very professional ontology in diabetes treatment. Also, the uh, ontology can uh, uh, made uh, encoding and uh, standardized encoding. Of, uh, di of uh, diabetes mellitus uh, knowledge in the form using uh, SNOMED CT, which is the main uh, standardized terminology in in, uh, in medical side. So uh, our second uh, work uh, we discussed about 
uh, mobile health monitoring and treatment systems based on uh, integration of SSN, uh, uh, SSN sensor ontology and the HL7 fire standard. Uh, uh, Note that in the previous uh, paper, we uh, studied the type 2 diabetes mellitus, but in this paper, we concentrated too much on the type 1 diabetes, which is mainly treated by using the uh, insulin. And for that, the patient need to be monitored at every time. Uh, that's why we entered uh, or we uh, started to work with sensor ontology and with uh, HL7 fire because we need to collect the data at uh, real time from patient. And this data is integrated with uh, uh, the uh, electronic health record data using FHIR standard, HL7 FHIR standard. And we gave uh, real time assistance for the patient while eating, while making exercise, while at every time. In, and actually, we gave the patient as a, a complete treatment uh, treatment uh, uh, plan. So this is also uh, this paper is published was published in uh, PMC Medical Informatics and Decision Making 2018 also. And we again uh, published um, a comprehensive ontology for uh, a type one diabetes mellitus uh, treatment using SSN uh, sensor ontology, standard ontology, and also HL7 fire. Um, in this uh, paper also, it, which is uh, a fuzzy ontology oriented uh, case-based reasoning framework for semantic data or sem uh, for semantic diabetes uh, diagnosis. Uh, for this paper, we extended, uh, even it is published in artificial intelligence and medicine later after uh, the previous papers, but this uh, uh, this work uh, focused on fuzzy ontology. So we extended the the ontology work by using the fuzzy side, fuzzy ontology. However, uh, this uh, uh, this paper is very narrow. The uh, ontology is very small, uh, and we worked with case-based reasoning integrated with ontology. So the work is. Uh, is uh, was not applicable in the medical side, but for the previous two papers, our, our two ontologies, they can plug in in real system if it is a, a real system. So, uh, but this this one is very narrow, very small, uh, but it provides a, a unique work because we integrated ontology with fuzzy, with fuzzy and also with case based reasoning. Uh, this is the main framework of this paper. So we, uh, it was challenging to work with case-based reasoning and uh, collecting data from some uh, clinical database, prepare this in some case in some uh, case basis, and extend this work in using fuzzy ontology. And after that, uh, encoding the encoding the data using SNOMED CT ontology. Uh, and also to use uh, 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 or to build uh, an uh, query uh, parser and retrieving these uh, these uh, cases. So it, it it was a challenge to do that. Um, Uh, re very recently, actually in 2000, uh, 2021, we provide a comprehensive fuzzy, uh, a comprehensive fuzzy ontology based decision support system for Alzheimer's disease diagnosis. It is published in IEEE Access. This paper uh, also collect knowledge uh, regarding Alzheimer's disease diagnosis, and we build a fuzzy ontology uh, decision support system. Um, this is the main framework. Actually, we did this. I, I did this with uh, one of, uh, of my PhD students. The main idea of, of this uh, of this work is to also again uh, uh, manually uh, or and in collaboration with uh, some experts, collecting the collecting uh, knowledge from research papers, from books, from guidelines, from every uh, source. And we manually build an uh, an ontology. Even we used some uh, uh, tools uh, to automate the building process of of ontology and to uh, 
make population of this ontology. This is uh, not my uh, my point. The point is that what type of knowledge we added in this uh, ontology. Uh, 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 this knowledge is created manually. We, we collected this data by, uh, by our hand and we used automatic, automated tools to uh, populate the ontology. And this is also uh, unique work because there is no fuzzy ontology uh, in, the, in the literature speak about uh, Alzheimer's disease in this type of comprehensive. The, this ontology will be uh, uploaded very soon. We are just uh, finalizing it and we, it will be uh, published uh, on BioPortal very soon. We also uh, have uh, other work in, uh, even we work it now on Alzheimer and the diabetes. We work it on liver cancers, kidney diseases and other, but these all are uh, in knowledge-based CDSS systems wh where we, uh, we faced too much challenge and we wasted too much time and it was and also maybe it, it is not too much applicable in, in medical side because as we collected the ontology and we collected the knowledge and, and, the, and if this system worked in the real environment so after some time we need to maintain this knowledge we need, we need to enhance it in some way we need to adapt according to the new findings in the medical side so this will be very challenging to do that and also we found that experts are it is very difficult for experts to formalize their knowledge uh, in the same time uh, now in these days we we are uh, we we can find uh, too much data actually big data in medical and electronic health records uh, the power of uh, computers and the sophisticated algorithms uh, uh, forced us to uh, to in extend our work and to enhance clinical science support system by working with uh, uh, with data. We can now automatically uh, uh, extract knowledge, uh, not not from uh, uh, clinical practice guidelines and not from uh, uh, domain experts, but actually we we need to uh, ex extract uh, knowledge from data. So uh, in the same time, uh, uh, the working with uh, data data driven clinical science support system uh, allow allow the these systems to learn online to learn automatically. Uh, uh, even this is a uh, challenging and especially from the trustworthy point of view. But at least the system can uh, create its knowledge up to date every day or every month or every. After some period, we, it can enhance its knowledge to be applicable in the medical domain. Our first trial in this uh, uh, side uh, of data-driven systems, uh, we, create, we uh, implemented a, a paper, a comprehensive medical uh, decision support framework based on heterogeneous and sample classifiers for diabetes prediction. Actually, we built, a, and this paper published in electronics in 2018, uh, actually, it is not that difficult paper. We just build uh, an ensemble classifier using uh, uh, majority voting. So this work it was just our starting. Even we did uh, some uh, different work in uh, in feature extractions and in combining and integrating uh, different. Uh, different data about patient. So, uh, also we did uh, uh, also in this type of uh, topic of data-driven decision support system, we uh, created uh, or we uh, published an in paper for intensive care units for uh, mortality prediction using MIBIC data set and for uh, for this paper, we worked with, with, with time series data. So we collected uh, a huge uh, uh, number of patients from MIMIC data set around maybe some more than 10,000 or something like that. Also this paper uh, I, I did with one of my PhD students. So we worked with time series data and we uh, build many uh, ensemble uh, models. We work it with uh, also machine learning models and we work it with very different uh, 
uh, our uh, uh, time series data like six hours, 12 hours. So we just take the data of the patient. Uh, every, every patient has more than one reading. So we collected these data, even single uh, six, uh, six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, and we predicted the mortality of the patient inside uh, the hospital. Uh, this paper uh, also uh, published in ITRIPLE Access in 2018. And uh, I did this paper with Professor Jose, uh, uh, and it, it uh, extend the fuzzy, uh, extend the, the, the fuzzy ontology uh, knowledge of uh, it extended the electro the, the uh, fuzzy system the regular fuzzy systems that like Mamadani or Takagi Sujini Kong this type of systems we extend it by using a uh, fuzzy ontology to build uh, uh, interpretable model so uh, this was the main framework of our uh, of the paper we uh, build a, a fuzzy rule based systems for a different type of data uh, regarding alzheimer disease we like glucose levels kidney functions liver function you know diabetes mellitus is a chronic disease which affect all uh, affect liver affect the kidney affect uh, the lipids and also it has symptoms at, uh, and also it affect the uh, level of glucose in the body so we collected these old data and we uh, built a decision support system, uh, 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 little decision support system for each of these, and we collect all of the uh, their decisions and build the final system. The main point is uh, we try to make the system interpretable from many sides. Firstly, we build the fuzzy system in a professional way. Was uh, actually this uh, the majority of this work uh, has been done by Professor Jost, and thanks for that. So we build our uh, fuzzy system in, a, uh, in a, an interpretability, focusing on interpretability. And the other main important thing, we actually build this uh, real system. The main important thing is we here, as you can see, uh, every single system from this, we have a sugar level, kidney uh, uh, symptoms. Uh, we Every one of these is is is, uh, is separate, so we can firstly we can uh, neglect any of these, as you can see, not available, not available. If if someone if some if one patient has maybe uh, has no sugar uh, level test, so we can just ignore this uh, part, and this will affect the confidence the confidence of the uh, results, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. The, the main important thing also, we uh, we made the uh, collection of complications and symptoms very dynamic. As you can see, the, 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 the physician can uh, open the ontology here and select as much symptoms as possible, as he needs, and also add the severity of these symptoms here, as you can see. So, uh, if we speak about uh, diarrhea, it has severity of 0.5, uh, fatigue, severity of 0.8, and all of this. And the uh, final and the final decision would consider all of these dynamic number of uh, complications and symptoms. So for one patient, I can enter only one complication and symptom. And in the other patient, I can enter as much as I can, 20 symptoms or 20 complications, 30, any number. And all as you add more uh, complications, this will affect the uh, uh, decision and will affect the confidence of this decision. So recently, with, we worked uh, with, with uh, Alzheimer's disease domain. Actually, we stayed for around uh, four to six months is just studying the medical side of al 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 Alzheimer because I believe that uh, working in, in medical domain is not uh, uh, too much related to machine learning and deep learning. It, uh, working with machine learning and deep learning is not a big deal. 
uh, while you are working with very sensitive domain like uh, like uh, like uh, me medical domain we we have to understand the, the 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 business of the problem first what what we are talking about and after that building uh, a deep learning or machine learning pipeline this is not a big uh, problem so we stayed very long time to understand what is the meaning of this disease what's the meaning of diagnosis what's the meaning of progression detection of the disease what what this medically mean and also we collaborated with some experts to understand what is the, the problem and after next we, we we started to build our systems so we will speak about uh, as we concentrated mainly now on alzheimer disease we will uh, speak about our previous work our current work and our uh, uh, future plans uh, you know that uh, Alzheimer's disease is a, a chronic disease. So uh, it is, uh, its data is collected over time. So uh, we used mainly the ADNI data set. Uh, we, f the first paper we did in Alzheimer was uh, published in Neurocomputing uh, Journal in 2020. Uh, it's, it is a multi-modal, multi-task deep learning model for Alzheimer's disease progression detection based on time series data. And this, this is the main framework of the paper. We, uh, we take the, uh, the BET data, MRI data, cognitive scores, uh, neuropathology data, and assessment data. Please note that uh, regarding the image data, we didn't make image processing at all. We just uh, took the extracted features from the uh, ADNI itself. But we just on, only uh, by the, this data, these features were uh, collected by ADNI using uh, free surfer. And we made pre-processing for this data. We built a uh, separate uh, uh, um, hybrid models for each for each modality this is the meaning of multi-modality so uh, this for, for this we we use the uh, one dcnn and uh, after that lstm to uh, to extract the uh, the knowledge from uh, every single uh, modality in the same time we uh, talk that uh, we can't ignore ever the patient demographics patient uh, history lab tests, vital signs, and this, but uh, these data, um, some of these data is uh, collected uh, in the baseline visit, which is the first visit, and uh, some of these data actually uh, was, um, uh, it should be uh, in the form of time series, but we didn't find it, we, we, did, we only found the, uh, the baseline uh, uh, baseline data only for, for these uh, patients. So uh, we, we took these data and we built another feed-forward neural network. Uh, and uh, this data uh, actually helped the, our system a lot, helped the, this deep learning model and the time series uh, extracted features. Uh, we made uh, concatenation and the uh, fusion of this uh, knowledge here. And uh, we learned it around one, two, three, four, five, five tasks in the same time. Our main idea was to predict the uh, progression of Alzheimer's disease after uh, different time uh, points. Actually, we predicted it after uh, seven years and after five years and after. So different, uh, we made uh, too many experiments uh, in this to, to check the accuracy and the performance of the system, but we the main idea is to predict al 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 Alzheimer uh, progression after around uh, maybe 7.5 uh, years. Our main idea is to predict Alzheimer uh, disease and in the same time to provide the physician with uh, some kind of proof about our uh, prediction. So we say that the patient will progress to Alzheimer disease after 7.5 uh, years because uh, it's others will that, MMSE were that, FAT uh, were that, and CDR, uh, SP, this uh, are main 
these are very important uh, metrics or very important uh, uh, biomarkers uh, where the, it, it will give the physician much more confidence that the, our decision is right or wrong. Our next paper uh, published in scientific reports and uh, actually uh, also this paper I collaborated uh, with Professor Jos uh, to, to, to prepare this work and uh, uh, actually he also did the majority of this work. Thanks for that. Uh, it is a multi-layer, uh, multi-model detection and prediction model based on explainable artificial intelligence for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, in this paper, we work it uh, only uh, with uh, baseline data. We didn't work with a time, time series data because we concentrated actually and focused too much on explainability side of Alzheimer uh, disease prediction. So this is our uh, main framework. Also, as you can see, because uh, we found it is very challenging to collect the data from other side than uh, ADNI. ADNI is a, a, a huge data set and somehow it is a, a realistic data set. So all of our work actually done on ADNI data we are now trying to make collaborations with other uh, places to collect other data. Uh, so you will find that we we uh, depend we depend on our uh, the same modalities: BET, MRI, cognitive scores, genetic data, demographics, uh, cerebral spinal fluid data, and the lab tests. So the same as before, but here we didn't work with uh, time series data. Uh, our model is two layers. In the first layer, we used random forest to just uh, predict if the uh, the patient uh, is normal or or not normal. It is it is normal or not. So just that this is the first stage, and uh, we used random forest. And up in the same time, we gave explainability using SHAP. Uh, to provide the, some kind of feature importance. And also, at the same time, we built around 20, 22 explainers using decision tree and fuzzy systems here. Uh, this is the first layer. The second layer, if the patient is not normal, so it, 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 maybe he is, he will convert to, uh, uh, he will convert to Alzheimer's disease. Uh, after some time, so this is the second layer of our world. Uh, also, we build using random. Forest. As you can see here, you can notice that we uh, we didn't focus too much in in uh, building very sophisticated machine learning model for prediction, but we was concentrating here in the in the explainability side. So this is uh, our uh, like the the framework for the explanations. So the data you get into the random forest classifiers and uh, we get the decision. So the patient is normal, not normal. It is uh, cognitively normal or Alzheimer. And if not, so if he will convert to Alzheimer after some time. And uh, we build these type of explanations, fuzzy explainers, shape, shape explainers and and also uh, decision tree explainers. All of these uh, uh, things are done in, uh, in our work. We, we get uh, global feature importance like that. We build the uh, visualized decision trees, even we didn't publish this because of space restrictions. And also we got uh, an, an, uh, fuzzy rules like that. And also, we gave an explanation for every single decision. So, if the uh, 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 this is called, as you know, local explanations. Our next paper uh, published in uh, knowledge-based systems, and also 2020. Uh, it uh, it is a robust hybrid deep learning models for Alzheimer uh, progression detection. 
this is the main framework of the paper. We used here time series data. Uh, actually, we used only four time steps for every from every modality, and don't consider this as a, as a short uh, time series because this is a very challenging to collect this data from the data set. So uh, we build an LSTM model for every single uh, uh, from, uh, from, from every single modality, and we concatenated the results. Also, here there are some background statistic data, static data, sorry, which is collected in the baseline only, and around 108 features. We made uh, flattening for all of this uh, data uh, from all of these features, extracted features here. Uh, after that, we built two types of models, and uh, uh, we made a, a, a good contribution here because uh, in the right side of the figure, we uh, uh, we uh, replaced we replaced the uh, uh, softmax model uh, in the, the classification model at the end of the deep learning model with others. Uh, regular machine learning and the fuzzy uh, systems like random forest decision tree support vector machine and Fourier, uh, we uh, found that these models achieved uh, much, much more uh, accurate results than softmax. So we built here uh, uh, as a hybrid model. On the other side, we uh, built a multitask regression. Uh, uh, I mean that uh, our main idea was to uh, to use the time series data to predict some critical uh, some critical features in the uh, after some time. So let's let's say it in another way. Uh, I don't know if I put here some figure for that. No, actually not. So we take uh, the first four time steps: t1, t2, t3, t4. Uh, and the, uh, the time step zero was at the baseline, time step one after six months, time step two after another six months, step th three after six, so six, 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 around uh, uh, 18 months. So we could look at data for 18 months. And we need to, ex to predict if Alzheimer will, uh, will, if the patient will convert to Alzheimer. Uh, in uh, after uh, after 48 months, so <clears throat> so uh, our idea here is not to predict Alzheimer directly, but we predict some very critical biomarkers after uh, 48 months. So we predict AM, MM. Uh, C, D, A, C, this, all of these are, are uh, critical biomarkers, which uh, uh, physicians are usually used to, uh, to evaluate the current state or the future state of the patient. So we, exit, we predict all of these using multitask regression. We predict all of these after 48 months. And we used the predicted uh, values there to uh, check the status of the patient. So this, uh, so we, we built two different systems, two separate systems, as you can see, MRBL and the DFBL. Th these are two two systems. The one is uh, to check the uh, make a combination of heterogeneity between deep learning fe extracted features from time series data and regular machine learning classifiers. And the other side is to use multitask modeling to uh, predict critical uh, biomarkers after some time and use these biomarkers to check the status of the patient at, at that uh, point, or at that time, which is after 48 uh, months. Uh, our uh, second uh, paper uh, published also in Future Generation Computer Systems in 2020. Uh, this is Alzheimer's disease progression detection model based on an early fusion of uh, cost-effective multimodal data. At this uh, paper, 
actually we forgot about MRI data and BET data. This is uh, this data uh, uh, or uh, to collect this data uh, in the hospital for the physician to take the decision. It is very expensive. Also, the scanners used to collect this data are very expensive. We 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 can't find this in many clinicians. Uh, so uh, we concentrated here to work on cost-effective multimodal data only. We we didn't use like imaging uh, ever, neural imaging. So um, as you can see here, we also work with, with ADNI data set, but here we collected a, a very cheap data like comorbidities, what type of complications that the patient has. The patient had maybe hypertension, diabetes, uh, other type of brain diseases like that. So uh, we, we, we need to check if there, are, uh, there is a good relation between this modality, this comorbidities and the progression of Alzheimer. And also uh, medications, we concentrated on what type of medication the patient was taking while he is uh, 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 suffering from Alzheimer and or, or not suffering just in, in, a, uh, in the beginning stages of a disease and see if, the, if there is some effect of this uh, chemical substances uh, that the patient to take every day on the progression of his, uh, of his uh, or her uh, state. We use demographics and we use cognitive scores. So as you can see, we didn't use any imaging in, or any expensive uh, uh, data. Uh, and also, uh, we, we faced a, a big challenge here because uh, if you look in the ADNI data set, you will find uh, that uh, the comorbidities and uh, uh, medications, they are, uh, uh, they are registered in the, data, in the data set as a plan text. So there is no standard there. The data are just text. So the same the same disease, maybe Alzheimer's disease, you will find, uh, sorry, the diabetes mellitus, you will, you will find sometime patient registered as diabetes. Other one, diabetes mellitus. Other one, DM. Other one, diabetes uh, M. So there is no standard. So we faced a challenge here, and we used uh, uh, ATC ontology just to uh, formalize and encode this knowledge. And we found another challenge that uh, the data was very sparse. So there are so many uh, null, uh, so many MET uh, spaces. So we made uh, aggregations of these diseases uh, and made, uh, so if, if there are some around four, three diseases from the same category, we just use the name of the category, not like details of, the, of every uh, disease from the comorbidities and also from the uh, medications. You know that medications had grooves in some way. So we depend on uh, this uh, standard ontology to encode our data. After that, this is the main challenge of the paper. And after, as I said before, we just failed our robust uh, machine learning pipeline. We divide data training testing. We use mid data balancing using uh, uh, SMOD. And after that, we used stratified team for cross validation uh, to build our uh, and evaluate our uh, model. Um, also, we we uh, had a paper which is under review now in applied soft computing. Uh, this uh, this paper speak about uh, an uh, information fusion based ensemble classifier for automatic detection of Alzheimer uh, disease uh, Alzheimer disease progression. Uh, in this paper, we uh, we did uh, two main things. We collected uh, uh, raw uh, time series data from uh, cognitive scores, MRI, and neuropsychological uh, batteries. Um, after that, we uh, convert this uh, data, time series data, uh, into, we collected uh, some statistical features from this uh, time series data, like we collected for all, for every time series, we collected its mean, its max, standard deviation, uh, amplitude, and just some kind of statistical uh, features to convert the data from time series data to just 
not time series data, one, one, only one step. Uh, we did this before of, uh, because of uh, two uh, reasons. Firstly, we, we, we uh, was working with regular uh, uh, machine learning. We didn't prefer to, uh, to work with uh, 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 like CNN or RNN uh, uh, deep learning because we was concentrating on uh, uh, checking uh, the, uh, the effect of uh, uh, the effect of heterogeneity in the data and heterogeneity in the uh, base classifiers on the accuracy and the performance of ensemble classifier. This is our main task here. So uh, we uh, measured uh, if we uh, used the same data to build the ensemble, what is the effect of, and other and uh, for other experiments we use different type of data. So we use the same data with the same the base classifier and we use different data with the same classifier, different data with different classifier. To this all to just uh, evaluate the uh, the effect of heterogeneity in the base classifiers and in the data, uh, the, the effect on, on the, uh, the ensemble performance. So we also have, we also have a paper, uh, this will be submitted very soon. We are working on it now in neuro, neural computing and applications. Uh, this is two stage deep learning models for, al for Alzheimer's disease diagnosis and mild cognitive impairment uh time uh, time of conversion prediction uh, our main idea here uh, is to not not predict uh, that the patient will uh, um, uh, as you remembered from the previous papers we just predict that the patient will convert uh, to Alzheimer's disease after six months or after 20, uh, 48 months or not yes or no we was concentrating on just predict uh, if he or not. But here in this in this paper, we uh, made this as a dynamic uh, prediction. So we we here we we will say that the patient will convert to Alzheimer's disease, and in the same time we will predict when he will convert to Alzheimer's disease. Not after six months or forty eight months or any time or, or seven point five years. We, we don't care about that. We only care about the, 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 the patient will convert and exactly after how, how long time. So this also a unique work. There is no uh, papers in the literature speak in, in this way. Now our current uh, work, this our previous, uh, our previous work now, our current work, uh, we are trying now to, uh, to build an optimized dynamic ensemble-based clinical cell support system for explainable uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease diagnosis. This is our uh, framework. We uh, uh, also we made some co collect some data and made preparation for this data using uh, NSGA uh, feature uh, selection and uh, using. Uh, other techniques to prepare the data in a different way, but my, our main concentration is here in the knowledge engineering because we will use uh, dynamic ensemble uh, classifier, dynamic ensemble classifiers, and this no one used this before, and we will use uh, many types of uh, optimizations, especially the genetic optimization techniques, uh, and also we we will build uh, an explainability capabilities in, this, in our model using case-based reasoning and also using other, uh, other techniques like feature importance and uh, natural language uh, generation. Uh, as we have some experience in working with case-based reasoning, we will build a case-based ontology and we use this to, uh, to semantically uh, uh, extract the most similar cases from the uh, from the uh, from our database, which are very similar to the case in hand. So our uh, uh, visual interface here will say that the patient will convert to Alzheimer's disease because he is very similar to this and this and this and this. 
So uh, this type of system, I think uh, I, it, it will be a uh, good contribution. After that, also uh, in the same time, now we are working on a, a, a survey for trustworthy artificial intelligence also in Alzheimer's disease informatics because I, um, I assume that I read too much and I study too much in this domain. So um, I just, uh, I will just uh, study about uh, the trustworthy guidelines and uh, the way is uh, this uh, uh, these guidelines are formulated in the form of uh, uh, algorithms or uh, metrics or um, mathematical equations and like that and we will apply these all on the alzheimer disease uh, uh, literature because you can see that there is no system in the in the literature uh, in the in the uh, real world uh, which uh, apply Alzheimer's disease decision support system in, in hospitals. Th there is no such system. And we believe that the main problem is uh, the trustworthy. The physicians and the hospital at all, and even the community, are not believing in a, decision so a clinical decision support system. So we will evaluate the current state of at least Alzheimer's disease domain. We will see that because of uh, uh, the shortage on trustworthy, these systems are not applied in uh, in real environment. So this is our next. So we are working on two papers now, this one and and this one. Uh, our future directions for uh, clinical decision support system. Firstly, we need to, and this is, uh, I just, um, I just uh, need uh, if someone is uh, need to work in this uh, in this topic, he is more than welcome. I I really need to work, and this is actually my dream to build a CDSS uh, embedded system in a distributed electronic health record, and also another stage to build distributed uh, clinical support system. Let's speak about the first one. Uh, you know, uh, one of the main reasons for not applying uh, a, a electronic health record in the medical domain, beside trustworthy, is uh, the CDSS, CDSS system. Uh, actually, it is not helping physicians it, because physicians need to enter data manually. And the new state of the patient is what he, the patient is suffering from. So he will take very long time until he encode the data in acceptable way for the clinical sense support system and the giving this data for, for the system and he just wasting his time. So we need to build to make the CD system as a, a just a, a component, a, a, a transparent component and give the decisions uh, immediately in the optimum time without the interference with the physician. So we need to build this. We need to make the CDS system very connected to the electronic health record. Even both are, this is a big challenge, by the way. I have one of my students is, is working on uh, the uh, electronic health record interoperability because we need to make the data uh, uh, standardized in some form to make this system speak to each other uh, correctly. Uh, in the, in the, this is the first point. The second point is to build a distributed decision support system because, as you know, the patient is not going to the hospital. Maybe he is not suffering from single disease. He is suffering from multiple diseases. So we need to have uh, 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 many decision support systems. Uh, everyone in a single disease, or we may have a distributed knowledge base and in a single one inference engine, and make these systems uh, speak to each other. So the patient, uh, the, the physician will may get a, a, a summarized uh, decision about the patient from different decision support system at the same time. So this one of the major points that we need to work on. Actually, we, we, I, I have uh, some experience in encoding data. I built a, a good ontology for uh, SNOMED CT, and I, we, uh, you know, the standardization of electronic health record is very related to ontology. So, 
we had some work and we, we worked with some students, but this is a complex uh, job. We, we need to work on uh, more deeply. And this is the first one, so I, I, we speak about that. Also, as I, in, I joined uh, my new lab to work in explainability, so we, we have to, uh, I, I will work on explainable, uh, explainable decision support system for Alzheimer's disease for also uh, some time, and we, I, I will try to build some, some, uh, some system like that. You know, this is uh, very near to the to the previous uh, paper, but uh, the main point here is the raw data acquisition, as you can see in the bottom of the slide. We will try to uh, uh, make uh, uh, integration between the heterogeneous uh, patient historical data collected from different electronic health records, and we will integrate this with patient real-time sensor data which is collected from different places. Even we hope that we can collect the data from social media also regarding the same patient. We, uh, we, after that, we use, we, we use cloud-based big data integration and data standardization to store these data using a different, as you can see, different standards, open air, uh, HL7 fire, basic formal ontology, SNOMED CT, SSN, all of these are will be used to uh, integrate or or, or make uh, interoperability for this type of data, and we will just prepare the data in some way. Uh, the main point is here: we we will build a knowledge base. Uh, as 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 you see, uh, I uh, I spoke about uh, knowledge based decision support system and the data driven decision support system. So we need to integrate both to uh, make our, uh, the more, our system more robust. Because, you know, uh, our main target is to, to, com uh, to convince physician about our decision. So we are fighting to just convince him about our results, about our decision, that our decision is right. So if we build a decision support system using data-driven and in the same time give the physician uh, 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 a medically sense, a medically uh, uh, known knowledge uh, from knowledge-based decision support system and the uh, interpretable and the explainable uh, knowledge from uh, this knowledge-based system, the physician will be convinced much more. At the same time, we will just build, as we said before, a case-based reasoning system to extract the similar cases from the uh, database uh, or from the electronic health record that are similar to the, the current patient. After that, and this is the main uh, and the most important thing, is to build a user interface. So we may build a web-based interface or mobile application for the physician uh, to just monitor and interact with the patient, even he is at home or at any place, and give him uh, an explainable interface, as you can see. Uh, Maybe we can also give a decision support system for 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 patient with a different capabilities of explainability according to his experience and like that. So this is our uh, next idea. The, our final uh, final uh, final idea is to build a trustworthy CDSS system for Alzheimer's disease and I. Believe me, I, I don't know how I will do this because uh, this is very challenging. If you uh, if you uh, read about uh, uh, trustworthy uh, CDSS, speak about a variety of topics. So your system must be robust, must be fair, must be friendly for the uh, physician, must be uh, secure, must be uh take over privacy so too many topics you have to handle in the same paper just to make the the work your work is trustworthy so uh, you have to support human in the loop requirement support online learning from distributed electronic uh, you have to give the physician uh, or the decision support system the capability to stop making decision if it has a low confidence of its decision so 
support different groups of inputs with different level of uh, uh, confidence to make interactive decision support. Uh, as, you, as I said, uh, your system must be robust against adversarial attack, and you have to make the, your performance is very high because at, at the end, you, you, your, your, your accuracy must be high or, or the system will not be acceptable. Uh, you have to consider uh, to, to, make the, to make the validation and the testing for the system. You have to use heterogeneous sources of data, and this is not available until now. So you have to not use, don't use only ADNI data, but use data from different the, the sources just to make to, to be sure that the, the validation is right. Uh, you have to follow some standards to make trustworthy. You have to manage interoperability with the uh, electronic health record. Uh, you have to use hyperparameter optimization. So, too many things you have to use to build a trustworthy decision support system. But this uh, topic is, if we build a trustworthy decision support system, so you, we will start to, to see uh, uh, this, uh, the effect, or the real effect, uh, and the benefit of these systems in the uh, real environment. Actually, I collected too many things too. So, also you have to provide. Uh, customized and context-aware explainability. I, I, here I, I am speaking about if uh, the person who is receiving the explainability is just a practitioner, you have to give him as explainability according to his experience. But if the patient, if the physician is uh, expert, so you have to give him a more details, more uh, sophisticated explanations. If you are giving explanations for Patient, so it is. It must be uh, shallow for them because they don't know about medical side. Uh, also, uh, it is very important to measure the fidelity of the uh, uh, explainable artificial intelligence. Uh, as you said, uh, the, in, as according to the Arabian law, they said that the patient uh, uh, right right to explain the uh, statement as your. Uh, they said you, the patient has the right to get to get explanation, but they didn't say that this is accurate explanation. What type of explanation he, he should have? So we, we, we must find some way to measure the accuracy uh, and the acceptability of the XAI uh, features. Uh, we will explore the power of fuzzy ontology and case-based reasoning and visualization to extend the literature of XAI techniques. Um, also, we will try to evaluate the fairness and accuracy and implement seamless integration between uh, CDSS uh, and the electronic health record and build easy to use graphical user interface if we build uh, a mobile application or web, uh, web uh, applications. And also accountability, accountability. Actually, I didn't read too much on uh, the study too much about this topic. But uh, we will, this is our uh, future work. So thank you so much. I finished. Actually, I, I, I think I took a long time, but sorry about that. So now, uh, uh, please, if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Sato, for your presentation. Thank so uh, now it's time for the audience. If uh, anyone has any question or comment, uh, please just uh, raise the hand. I'm not sure if you are able to make uh, questions directly. Uh, I think so. You you can you can click the the symbol for the hand, and then we can uh, let you make the question. Manuel uh, Manuel Lama, I want to make a question. Uh, can you unmute your mic, Ma Manuel? Actually, I can't hear. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, now. Yes. OK, thank you. Congratulations for your presentation. I, thank I you like so it much. very much. Thank you so much. Um, I have a question about the use of, of the different ontologies uh, you use in, in your applications. Yes. Uh, how do you use 
uh, you use the uh, ontologies only for modeling the, uh, the, the knowledge or uh, you also use the ontology for reasoning, for extracting new facts? Yes, actually we use the, the ontology for extracting facts. We, we build the ontology in, uh, in, 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 in some way to be a comprehensive. If we just a minute, uh, I think you, you can uh, you can see. Can, can you see now my 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 screen, please? Yes. 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 Okay. So. can see that this is our uh, ontology. Actually, I didn't come to this site since a very long time. Once I started to work in, <laughs> in data-driven systems, I stopped mm -hmm. come here, but I will see the, if, if the system is allowed because its interface was not like that. So, <laughs> so in, in, anyway, this is the ontology, but we, we collected as much knowledge as we can from the literature, from the experts, from the uh, papers, from uh, even from books regarding how the diabetes mellitus is treated, how, how, mm -hmm. how, pe how, how re real mm -hmm. physicians are treating this, uh, this disease. And we collected as much knowledge as we can. And in this, also, by the way, we collected many because uh, as uh, Alzheimer, uh, the, sorry, diabetes mellitus is a chronic disease, so it is related to many other diseases like hypertension uh, or other diseases. So and we collected... Sorry. Do, do you also collect information or knowledge about the process for 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 the management of this kind of patients? Yes, we we actually we collected uh, as much as I we, the, the, the ontology is very comprehensive. Every single data that is needed for uh, making treatment for the patient is there even we didn't maybe with some data we didn't use but every data the infrastructure is there but in the same time we populated the ontology with some real physicians some real patients and we used the uh, uh, inference engine of the ontology to make the decision if the about the patient treatment what type of medications he should he should have and in what quantity he should have so uh, the ontology is like a small decision support system. It is only need a user interface and they give the patient the data and it will give you the treatment suggestions directly. Mm, okay. Okay, thank you. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other question or comment regarding the presentation? Alejandro. Hi. Uh, hello, thank you. And um, while well, I see uh, uh, many data is involved in all these papers, and so I was wondering to which point or to which extent, uh, well, they are mostly based on existing database, data, data sets or uh, are also part of data that has been collected for the specific purpose of the of your research so this is one thing and the other thing is um, you mentioned or I, at least i saw in your uh, in your diagrams showing the data involved that uh, well, there are some data that are related to uh, diagnostics. Uh, Hola, ¿qué tal? Chamaches, no? Hmm. Uh, diagnosis uh, tests that are uh, typically quite expensive, right? Uh, sí, sí. And the other, sí. uh, the claro. other, yeah, the other, <laughs> <laughs> Manuel. Uh, mm. Can you can you mute the manual? Right, thank you. Uh, 
And then the yeah the other kind of data you mentioned was the um, the cognitive scores. So I was wondering whether you can give some more detail on the kind of of cognitive scores or tests that you uh, may use in these papers. You mean uh, give this data for who? You mean, and I need to explore another, in another work the, the capabilities of these scores or, or what? Because yeah, the cognitive scores, scores that you involve in, in your data, uh -huh. uh, which kind of tests you are you were using or where these data were uh, coming from? Uh -huh. uh, just to know whether you were uh, just capturing some results uh, over time or just uh, at some specific moment yes because, I, I, yes, yes because this is related to some research that we are conducting in oh. which uh, typically um, physicians and also uh, caring caring people are yeah are they are interested in or they Every few months, they they check which is the cognitive uh, yes. state of the patient. Mm -hmm. So they typically have a look at what happened over time, but they yeah. don't. As far as I know, they don't have a, a, yeah, a support or computing a computer support to see or to measure how how was the evolution yet. Yes, actually, we 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 faced a, a very a very big challenge to collecting uh, data, uh, especially time series data. Uh, the data, uh, the only data set that we found uh, a little bit complete is the the uh, ADNI data set. ADNI data. It, uh, even when you are working with time series data, you will uh, shock because you will find the data is very messy, very um, you you you. You know, we have around maybe around uh, around 30 time steps, but we only found that the applicable time steps is four, just only four, four time steps. So, uh, so it is very complex to find. Uh, it is very difficult to find a, a complete time series data uh, regarding the cognitive scores. Uh, we work it with the, uh, you know, uh, the time is uh, just, just to wait, please, because I need to come here for yes. If you if you look here uh, regarding MMSE score and the FAC score, CDR uh, uh, clinical dementia rating, some of boxes score. This these scores are just the calculated values. From other scores, if you take, for example, MMSE, MMSE, uh, this score depends on another 11, uh, 11 uh, markers. Just this, so this is the equation to collect or to to calculate the MMSE. So we used here a, 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 a little amount of uh, scores just to make the problem uh, more simpler. But uh, in real environment, and this is one paper that we are working uh, on, but I didn't put here in the in the presentation. We will work in the future on only one single uh, biomarkers or this. So we will predict Alzheimer's disease only, only based on MMSE, or only based on FAC, or only based on CDR SP. You know why? Because uh, we need to make uh, our decision uh, as cheap as possible. We need to make it uh, uh, very easy to, to, to apply in the real environment, even in the form of a mobile application, just to give the, the physician uh, just one idea. You can, you know that when some people, some person went to the uh, to intensive care unit, the physician there, and this is real, the physician there calculate one score based on the patient gender, the patient age, patient some the chronic diseases, and they expect that if the patient will die or not in the in the in the intensive care. Just one 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 number. We need to make something like that in Alzheimer's domain. So we need to 
based our work in a very little amount of biomarkers, even it is time series or, or not time series. Okay, thank you. I agree that you had to use, for example, the MMSE is the one of the most common use. Yes, but it is depend on too many other uh, sub markers to calculate this feature. Okay, any additional comment? We are out of time, but if there is any short question, uh, Alberto, please. No, no question because uh, unfortunately, hi, Shaker. Unfortunately, I couldn't attend the, the, the lecture. I just put it on just in the last few minutes. So just to say welcome to Welcome on board and happy to see that the nice presentation you have been prepared and hopefully it will be very useful for, of course, for anyone in the center to, to know about you, your research, your previous and current work, and also to promote some interaction with, with the other researchers in order to, to start new collaborations, not only the specific one we have currently now, but others which sure will emerge because, as Manuel mentioned before, there are issues related with ontologies and and other areas that there are teams in our uh, center that have been working on that for many, uh, many years and also in, in other different topics. So uh, uh, happy to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. We missed you too much, so <laughs> welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's the same for me. Uh, as I told at the beginning, it was really hard to to make a, a Sacker sign here his contract and to be with us. And we are looking forward to, to see him here in, in Spain soon. So if there is not any other comment or question, I think it's time for closing the seminar today. And as I told at the beginning, uh, if you want more technical details, if you want to have any collaboration, don't hesitate to send an email to Sacker directly or just talk to Alberto or me, and we will uh, make you uh, contact uh, with him and try to collaborate. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending the meeting. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you. So you can stop sharing the screen a uh, second. Yes, OK. Thank you.